Welcome, welcome, Luvdak, today. And I'm so glad for you to um, accept this amazing. I'm really looking forward to this conversation, actually. And um, uh, just to be able to start off also um, our conversation today. And I think that's where we also both of us met is this whole um, the project uh, Duet with Camera has also been exploring my own relationship uh, as a Kathak dancer with the camera and how I experiment with it in my research. And that's when I so we started sharing works around uh, this, uh, this whole idea, the medium of dance and camera, uh, the moving body and the moving image in a way. Uh, and that's when I found out about Vekri also. And I think I'll have this bias too of, uh, since I am a Kathak dancer too, and I have this question to start off the discussion with Vekri itself. We're gonna talk about Vekri and Ahuti's making and your own your relationship with camera and uh, dance and movement for sure. To start off, uh, I guess I'll probably also like this is this has been a question uh, is that how how did you how did you begin to start off uh, to begin these you know taking creative choices around um, and influences to choose Kathak a classical form a classical dance on screen you know to be able to sort of briefly ride us through that journey. Um, uh, of Vekri. Uh, first of all, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so good evening, everyone, and special thanks to Sumetha and Shivani for having invited me on this platform. And uh, it's it's always an honor and most importantly a pleasure to speak about uh, our own creative processes and this platform. Rather today evening, it's giving me one such opportunity, and I'm very really looking forward to this session. Uh, straight going to your question about Vekari, first of all, I want to say that uh, uh, it was a long process because it was, as you mentioned, uh, that it's my first major nonfiction work. And earlier, I've not uh, really made anything on music and dance, neither have not, I've never learned them as well. So uh, the process actually initiated from being an audience, a connoisseur, or just someone who admires certain art forms and had a certain interaction as an audience only so for so the whole process actually germinated from that stage and uh, i had a year and a half of a pre-production which includes the first uh, stages of research the advanced stages of research then applying for grants getting commissioned and uh, then writing the script so it took a year and a half and what happened in that year and a half was the project uh, had a very interesting trajectory so initially from a very basic idea of what I really want to work on, though, I mean, it's a very simple reason being that I found this uh, art form to be interesting. And by art form, I mean the art of utterances and not of uh, any classical dance form or music form. It's just utterances which were very interesting to me. And because I was using Hindustani classical music, I happened to choose Kathak as a form. So the choice of Kathak came from there only. So if I, if I was using Karnatic as a form, I would have chosen something else. So for me, the main theme of the film was utterances and rhythm and how I could explore it and dance became one of the processes, uh, dance or movement, if I may say so. Uh, but uh, the other creative choices or the film, which it became eventually, uh, it's a result of a year and a half uh, journey or even more than that, because the film also uh, developed as I started making it. And that's the beauty of making a film that you never, uh, or rather a documentary or non-fiction film that you are not fixated to a certain idea or a mood or a storyboard. And you always experiment and which continues even till the final sound stage as well. So uh, initially I had a theme and then uh, I'm really thankful to uh, Guru Parvati Dattaji because uh, the whole project got developed under her guidance because as I mentioned, I don't have any technical training. And it was through a long conversations where I started getting acquainted with the technicalities of music and dance or rhythm, if I may say so, uh, which is very much integral because uh, although as a filmmaker, I am making a film, I'm not producing a dance concert or a musical piece, but uh, still I want to be technically accurate as much as possible and uh, try to figure out the latitudes where I can experiment, but not distorting what the actual art form is. So, uh, so the process initially be uh, began from uh, 
from a place where I wanted to see how utterances play a very important role, where I take a literary piece. For my case, it was Meg Tutam, and how I translate it into rhythmic pieces like Tukras or Parans and all, and how utterances become important. So the process started from there. And in a year and a half, or maybe more, as I was making the film, it it ended up being more into how uh, we identify with space in a bandish through utterances. So uh, that is something I discovered once I started uh, maybe developing the film at the later stage or maybe early stage of shoot. So uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, I try to identify with the movement in uh, through camera in general as well is because how space gets uh, identified or expressed. Probably I will use the term expressed here because uh, as dancers, what you do on stage you, is you respond to a certain sound, which is maybe which are uh, which is the which are the technical pieces or the rhythmic pieces out here. But for me, I was also responding to a certain sound through uh, my body, which was the camera. So that's where I started really uh, uh, getting more deeper into how camera can be treated as a body as well, as a second person, as a first person even as an observer. So there were different layers which I could express, but always keeping sound, which in this case were the utterances as uh, the focus of uh, attention as well as exploration. So this is how, this is a very in short, how the journey actually started I mean, from a very audience perspective to uh, starting to use a camera as one of the themes of exploration. I, the journey happened. Yeah. That's so interesting, actually. Like the idea of space being expressed through the camera and the sound is—is is there an example that um, you can share a visual reference uh, that you would like to yeah. um, share? That yeah, I will do that. I I, I shall um, do that. Uh, but before that, there's something else I want to say as okay. well. Uh, that uh, I mean, as a performer, like. Uh, one of the problems which I also encountered at that point of time uh, was uh, as a performer you get a complete 3D space like when you're exploring through your body mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, there are limitations when you are expressing through a camera because at the end of the day I'm getting a 2D image on screen it's just dimensional so uh, I mean I think the camera is just one of the ways we, with which we can express that space which is not possible actually through camera like there are many limitations with the kind of image we produce and the engagement of the, this kind of image with us uh, has a lot of limitations but maybe I can start off with an example a very short example so uh, uh, this this actually comes right I mean the beginning of the film you can say not exactly the start but after 10 to 12 minutes and uh, uh, here uh, we hear we will be hearing a uh, sarangi. So generally, uh, the lehra was getting set, which determines the layer. And after that, we will go into the theka phase. So uh, Mahagami, where I actually sh shot the film, it's a beautiful place. It's a Gurukul in Aurangabad, where people should go and visit whenever they get time. And uh, I got a lot of interesting spaces to use it. And somewhere down the line, I felt uh, that how this uh, uh, compo rhythmic composition. So if I look at this rhythmic compositions, the basic unit are the bowls or the syllables, and then uh, uh, it becomes a process of construction in space, which is also architectural. Like I can treat them as small blocks or bricks, and then compose the whole segment. So uh, space, that's why it became very important for me, and I wanted to use a space which was getting used for contemplating on all these themes for pro pro different productions. Uh, so uh, here I uh, first, uh, I, uh, we will see the camera explore the space as the lehra or the layer gets, uh, or the layer of the sequence gets uh, determined or identified. So I'm just sharing the screen.
uh, this so uh, this was a very short uh, segment uh, and uh, why i wanted to uh, extend it to the room was because uh, here the kind of music uh, through the means and everything which is getting played out through a very very small curvilinear movement we actually try to figure out how the movement in space can happen through uh, of, of the music through the camera as well and also cut it so it's not just uh, how you move the camera big because this uh, the whole occurrence of the sequence actually happens in time so how the cutting and where the cutting is going to happen that is also important so as far as the beat is concerned we figure out so uh, uh, so it's not just the speciality but also the temporality which gets expressed through it which are interlinked and we really cannot uh, leave the space away from the time aspect so these are pretty much interlinked as we uh, explore uh, these rhythmic syllables or other the musical patterns through body movement as well on stage and through camera so this is a very short example of what i showed i will be showing another example where we do not have any utterances as well so we also did not have any utterances out here but we had a certain uh, lehra piece so now i will be using another sequence where uh, we have uh, we don't have any musical piece but it's just the camera moves in the space uh, curvilinearly as well as uh, rectilinearly as well so I'm just sharing the screen one second for another sequence. So, uh, so I guess these are two examples I wanted to share, like very small examples. Like we mm. uh, come across uh, these kind of uh, attempts. I won't call them experiments. They are more like attempts because I was aware of what I was doing. So, mm. how uh, I mean, observing, like observing the kind of music or the sound or whatever, uh, and how, seeing how it gets expressed through the camera. And there is a lot of abstraction. Uh, which is uh, retained in this whole process and which also brings to the limitations of this process I, as I mentioned like the circularity and the rectilinear movement and there are many more movements in space which as a dancing body you can express on stage but through camera this process is very much two-dimensional or through the image and probably that's where I feel uh, uh, sound as a medium can be more powerful and sound as a medium has a lot of more spatial spectrum as well so the image and the kind of geometrical uh, figures which sound can produce or a rather a well-designed sonic space can produce is immense and that's why uh, when i decided to engage camera in this process i wanted to follow sound because there the whole set lies and what i was doing with the camera was a sub subset of that whole set so uh, that I, I guess this was my uh, uh, mode of operation you can say how i the process i followed and this actually developed as I started shooting. I didn't have this idea before. So it was more of a narrative based uh, work, which I, was, I had in my mind, a bit of information, a bit of expression of the essence of the kind of uh, syllables which was getting uttered. But uh, the more I started shooting, these are the things which intrigued me more. 
uh, about this whole process and uh, uh, here i mean i mean like the last one i really wanted to show without a music because uh, this for me is in general because this can also ha happen in silence the whole movement can also mm -hmm. happen in silence so i was also wondering because when you said about the limitation bit you know uh, like um, how like of course the camera this, the rectangular frame in any way it is it is limiting for because you have to do this as you said you know it's a 2d that you have to uh, make a 3d or 2d image at the end uh, but also in in terms of i was wondering if you can also share a little bit about if there was any challenges also um, sometimes also maybe basically to be shooting a classical form you know classical dance uh, is there anything that you particularly face while shooting that um, or something that you want to explore you might not get you don't find it exploring much about yeah, that I mean, so that would be interesting yeah, to know from your perspective is that's also important to know just a little yeah. uh, quick yeah. so uh, so basically i mean the, the 2d engagement is just one part, part of it but uh, the major constraint if i may say so what is the very basic nature of an image being represented so as far as i mean here i'm exploring uh, the abstract syllables out here but uh, what i'm showing on screen even if it's a door or a window or a tree or no matter what it is it is always representative and that's i feel is the biggest constraint of an image because uh, i mean the abstraction actually dies down and more i mean although we might try to create a spectrum but somewhere on the line i feel i mean you do not uh, get what probably a, a sonic installation could have given you like yeah, when i'm dealing with sound the idea of imagination or your way of creating or the subjectivity is much more and you can create multiple figures multiple images uh, which uh, i mean which can uh, I mean, which can really bring out the essence in any number of ways, which, which is not possible through image. So that is one major problem I really faced as I was uh, shooting this whole film. And uh, I personally felt that, uh, uh, I mean, in, in this way, there is uh, uh, another aspect uh, which we uh, also tend to ignore is uh, the importance of sound. Uh, in any audiovisual medium so uh, uh, the more we try tend to focus on it and the more we keep it in our fulcrum of thoughts uh, i guess we are going to get more important results uh, in in the long run so uh, that is one process which i also uh, figured out and also i have been using it in other projects very very relevant uh, but this is probably the mo most important there were other practical uh, limitations which i feel is going to be there in different cases but uh, other than that uh, this is one thing which uh, really opened up a lot of uh, ideas maybe which i will feel like exploring in the future i think also that that brings us to the next part of our conversation actually to open up this idea of like you know sometimes limit like i see that when you said about the circular motion being uh, which is of such an important part of kathak and his aesthetics you know uh, this the motion that you showed like there is a and, there is a sense yeah, of space one you thing, know? it's one and, thing i would like to uh, also mention before we forget it and move on to another thing. state so so the idea of using uh -huh. Katha, it being very much rectilinear or linear not a clear it being linear in many ways so that actually helped in this process so for example if i want to explore postures the idea of postures is not possible to uh, explore through a camera maybe it's not possible i mean any three but uh, 3d aspect with the speciality i mean there there must be some way uh, which i have not figured out but uh, like that's a huge limitation so if i'm using other forms mm -hmm. which has essentially a lot of postures like uh, you, you arrive at a sculpture point or you arrive at a posture and the posture is a whole and not just a point so here what i was dealing with was uh, uh, with different points and how i'm joining the points but if i am trying to focus on multiple points together which gives me a certain posture or, or a sculpture image i am not going to be able to follow the same process so i guess that's another limitation which thank god i didn't have to come across but probably these are limitations of camera so far which i have experienced uh, but i guess uh, uh, like the kind of practice which you also have been doing so there are different ways of look, looking at our performing body and uh, how uh, maybe uh, with more experiments 
or engagement with camera and the moving body, we can really figure out how we can create this whole setup uh, and create that image, which probably will uh, give us the proper essence of that process. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, in fact, I, I've also, I saw that kind of an engagement of that, you know, like a moving, the camera moving, but also um, in a way that the way you have also understood uh, the moving body, but in a, in a way that is also exploring the choreographies of it, uh, really in a conversation, which I see that then I am coming to the Ahuti's, Ahuti part of the discussion. I felt mm -hmm. like asking also around that idea, like in general, because it's a very, two very contrasting examples where Kree being solely were shooting, um, uh, I mean, Kathak, a form, uh, you know, aesthetics mm -hmm. of it. And then there it comes Ahuti, which is much more abstracted and, uh they there might be people who will not be saying it's not even a dance but how that makes me question you also as a filmmaker yourself when you're holding the camera sometimes we have our perceptions of dance also so what is your like you know how can if you start if you can also you know uh share with us what just what do you think you know what is dance and then when you are actually exploring ahuti for me, it is dancing. It, there are so many layers of dancing there in the edit process. And I mean, dancing not in the terms of rhythmic motions of movement, you know, it's, there is in the essence that you talked about as not just. Uh, so I see that happening a lot in uh, Ahuti. And if you could share uh, a little bit of a light around that as well, to be, it might be a very <laughs> big question, but it's just so important to understand, I feel, from another discipline to how you perceive dance and you know on screen and dance in general dance that would be to start off that discussion That's see i guess you uh, while presenting the question actually uh, really defined it in a very interesting way for me like dance is actually uh, a certain form of choreography uh, of space in time and uh, although it might sound a bit technical but i feel that's the best way and the most simplest way with, with which i can explain because uh it's just how i'm exploring a space uh, in time it, the whole process is occurring in time that's what dance it is so uh, it can be with music it can be without music it can be anything and uh, how we are expressing so it can be i mean of course we have certain structured forms and we assign a certain name to that we have a certain repertory of uh, like uh, items or uh, which are getting exp explored but any any special movement can be done so even it can happen in stillness so and also i guess rhythm is very important to that so uh, uh, like how we uh, separate music with the noise so music has a certain rhythm also a melody or uh, and uh, i mean the rhythm aspect is very important to it the rhythm not in a general sense but in a very fundamental way of how uh, a rhythm is uh, getting uh, explored i mean the whole temporal process as, as i explained uh, and uh, the camera also occurs in the same way because what the camera does is through movement or also through a certain composition which can happen on a tripod it is exploring space uh, of course there is a narrative which creates a certain context to the space uh, but very fundamentally, fundamentally, if uh, we have few things uh, uh, kept and we show an image, it immediately uh, engages us with the space. And it can happen through movement, it can happen through a static posture, and the whole process is happening in time. So it's the same thing which we are actually fundamentally, somewhere down the line, we, which we are exploring. But uh, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, that uh, when I talk, when I, uh, I mean, at times uh, while having conversation, I also uh, have difficulties in, uh, in saying whether it's a dance film or a film on dance. And it's very difficult for me to say because these terms are pretty close yet very distant from each other. And if you really want to ask me, like, how can I define this process? I'm not sure because if I look at it from a different perspective, it completely changes and I would like to pick a different name for that. But I guess, uh, uh, for me, like when I'm engaging the camera, it's one thing I'm very much uh, uh, aware that the final engagement of an audience is going to the camera. And no matter what I'm showing on screen, it's the camera and the lens or the latitude of the lens 
through which we are seeing that is providing the final uh, i mean and the I mean, that is providing the final uh, layer of engagement uh, and no matter how many layers are there behind but this is the first engagement door so uh, so placing the camera in a certain way and no matter what the subject is but this needs to be in sync and resonate uh, with uh, the other layers so uh, that's why i personally feel that uh, one must really have a clarity with the medium with which you are working if i was working with sound only if it was a installation kind of a thing the the attempt would have been different but when i'm dealing with the image i should be aware of the material of the image and what i'm showing what it is producing what it is seeing what kind of light it is producing because choreography does not mean choreography of the body i can have a choreography of lights as well it can be just a dark room and then i uh, put bit different variations of light from here and there and i create a certain dance of light so how can i define only movement of bodies that these are also like photons maybe if you call them so uh, uh i guess uh, it's very important uh, to have a uh, clarity of the perspective from where i am looking at the whole process and then we can i guess uh, it's just following the process from there onwards we can really go deeper into the subject and also explore terrains w- uh, which we probably have not thought about before and i have myself uh, experienced that as far as out is concerned if i may if i may come back to that uh, i feel uh, uh, i mean i mean out is one space where i actually did not want to uh, we use a lot of mudras if you have seen the film so we use a lot of symbolic gestures in the film which are narrative tools which are actually carrying forward the whole process but how the camera moves how i cut and most importantly how the sound actually plays because one very important part of this process was uh, i can also close my eyes and just imagine uh, through what i am hearing uh, so uh, for me uh, in ahuti the idea of dance was a whole choreography of both the image and the sound i cannot leave the sound in ahuti uh, and talk about the whole process so it's a whole thing which happened where i used the black screens we used uh, a certain kind of texture of sound we used a certain uh, curvilinear path Uh, and the idea of circularity was to talk about or rather allude to the circular time cycle which we focus on but main thing is the choreography of everything and it's the visual and the audio which actually got in sync and created a certain rhythm which took it which took us to the next stage so i just cannot talk about the whole process leaving the sound apart and just the image maybe i will just show you a very uh, brief segment from ahuti uh, and a very brief segment i don't know how much i i feel it's a film which should be seen in totality it's very difficult for me to even chop out a part and show, show. but still i will yeah. be uh, sharing a segment
so so yeah so but here i uh, showed a segment where i did not have any moving bodies i did not even show any symbolic gestures because when i showed those mudras people start uh, directly connecting it with the dance form but here i was actually trying to choreograph a sequence through like uh, horizontal and vertical planes and uh, trying to integrate it with, with a certain rhythmic sound so it actually as we edit and we create the whole sequence uh, so how we encounter the whole space in time actually gives me a certain rhythm which actually I, uh, would i would do the same thing if i was shooting a dance sequence so called traditional dance sequence as well so uh, fundamentally how i engage with space and time defines me how i am going to shoot uh, or rather explore a dance as well so so i think uh, uh, uh this answers your question as well from ahuti please in fact it's i mean yeah this uh, conversation is quite short but i i'm having even more questions around it because for me as as we had also had a conversation around it because we are trained our ears are trained in certain ways in which you know we really listen to music uh, especially when you're coming from this a uh, traditional space there is a way when music is considered as you talked about and then there is when i hear this uh, there is then there is a curiosity you know there is for me that's as a viewer i feel curiosity that why oh this particular sound can also be used as a part of a you know as as a something that represents a visual but otherwise if you separate this sound it is it's a noise it's a noise in the in its individual you know existence but when you're put like you know how you are the whole the whole holistically how you're seeing it in a way uh, that for me is intriguing and that's why i feel i and when i felt when i saw that um, i was like oh my god can i actually uh, can this be also music you know that was i mean the first uh, instance when i had that kind of a feeling too so it it um, just to be able to i think we are also oh we are we're running a little bit out of time so i'll probably um, share and lastly perhaps to to where i think raha conversations the idea of raha conversations was also to also to understand you know how we can start to think a little bit around you know using the camera when we are using as you said we have to engage with the medium too right so how can we start to think about new ways in which we can see classical dance or movement on screen because otherwise as the pandemic also calls for you, the screen becoming our space to sustain our forms you know as dancers as choreographers as movement artists and it's in, in, even more important for us to now understand uh, this relationship rather than it being separate disciplines you know so i would i would probably just ask in any ways in which you are thinking as a filmmaker yourself or some things that i think dancers should also more explore in ways in which you know classical dance on screen can be seen in a different light where even the viewer perspective like how as you said how is is at the end it's the viewer seeing uh, a classical form or any other uh, movement on screen how is it supposed to feel so just to end our sort of uh, discussion around it if we can find a way what is what could be a new future in a way to understand this you know um, i would love to shed your light on this yeah yeah see uh, as far as a traditional performance on stage is concerned like i mean there uh, the camera is uh, actually the perspective of the camera is pretty much three dimensional where it's just working as an observer so what it does is replicates the uh, Uh, stage it, it, it tries to approximate the stage experience which obviously it can't because we, we are seeing it on a very small monitor or maybe on a tv or whatever in online concerts right now uh, but uh, uh, that act, i mean the practical aspect also uh, limits uh, the scope of a performer because uh, at the end of the day uh, the idea of performing uh, i mean the, the dancing body on screen is more important and uh, the purpose of the concert is also very different but if i may look in from a very different aspect where if we can get a chance to really experiment with the form i think it's very important uh, to have the clarity regarding why we are making the project like first of all is it just to show the uh, the art form which is the dance in this case on screen so then it's different but do we really want to uh, present uh, an interaction of the camera which also moves uh, which also shares uh, certain uh, fundamental aspects 
uh, of exploration the same things uh, with the performing body how the camera also deals with it so if we are interested in that so there are lots of ways we we can uh, focus on i think uh, the common grounds which i talked about uh, about the compositions as well as uh, on uh, the explorations of space uh, in these compositions can be explored both uh, through the body and through the uh, camera as well and uh, probably the director should uh, be in sync uh, with the performer as well or the dancer out there so uh, what actually that can give is a much more holistic view of how these two bodies can actually it's more like a jugendbundi between a camera and the body then so uh, that that becomes more important but i am i still wonder how much uh, it is possible uh, to present uh, that kind of uh, I, mean, i mean that cannot be a uh, i mean substitute of a traditional dance performance but yes definitely like one concern which i have uh, and which is pretty much possible even in this way like uh, when we edit a scene even i have seen it in the last few months for, in this online concerts like we have two three cameras from two three angles and then uh, we are presenting it from different angles what i personally feel at times is that that fragmentation so it can be a wide shot and then we can go close so one can argue that if i want to see the hand why should i see the face if the mudras are important i should focus on it because in in a proscenium if someone uh, for for audience who is at the back street we cannot listen uh, or rather we cannot see the intricacies of the fine uh, intricacies of the mudras and everything from back street now we are getting a chance why shouldn't we have it but i think it is very important uh, that if i am trying to replicate an audience experience the whole performing body should be presented and if i really want to cut so it should ideally it should be a very uncut kind of a scene from wide angle and allowing the whole body to express because it's not the hand which is moving the whole body the feet are also moving the uh, it's not the right hand part which is moving or the face which is expressing the, the whole thing is happening so uh, that is very important which i feel uh, because we have got two three cameras and two three angles we are just cutting and editing it uh, uh, in between which destroys the essence of the role form but if you really want to present that fragmented uh the fragmented loop i think the choices should be very uh, important and not random so that actually can uh, really uh, uh i mean increase or rather elevate our experience uh, of uh, the fine integrations of these art forms uh, if we do not cut arbitrarily if we are very sure about where we want to do because uh, cut arbitrarily means that out of impatience that we are having the shot for 2 minutes we should put another angle it should not happen like that it should be a purpose of why we are changing the frame by we are changing our viewing perspective so if, even for normal uh, very traditional online concerts if we can bring that out and if you are aware then i guess uh, we can present something very interesting even with a limited scope if you are trying to experiment through movement in the camera and all there is a lot of way but at least this much can be done i always feel if we are getting a luxury of two three cameras we should be very much sure of where we are cutting and how we are choosing and not just use it just to change our Just to include a variation, you know. It's very interesting that you say this because I have actually, in an opposite way, thinking around it for the longest time. Because, you know, like uh, most of my experience of watching uh, mostly classical dance on screen has been that it has been a full, a full body documentation. When if I think it's also when you I would also agree that it's basically the why Absolutely. you're doing it as you said exactly what, the what is your choice of the um, so if your choice yeah, exactly. is to yeah. the body, uh, I mean yeah and but then at the end also it's also like right now when you're also engaging with the screen as a medium so there comes more possibilities more possibilities to explore as you said the body and it's so interesting now that i actually was looking from a very opposite perspective also for a long time and um, but i understand now why you say this because the whole essence is a sort of uh, missing yeah, but then I, uh, but then also there comes yeah i actually added one very important hmm. uh, uh, i mean criteria that if i am trying to replicate a stage experience so that is more important like when i say i want to replicate a stage experience i'm doing that and uh, if mm. i want to experiment like some of the processes which have been very interesting for me is how you have superimposed different layers and uh, uh, trying to observe with or other the material of the image in a different way 
that is a very different way of looking at the whole image and the purpose is different but if i want to replicate a stage experience if i want to talk about a very traditional way of looking at how this whole process happens then maybe i would like to uh, see these kind of variations happen maybe uh, and i'm not uh, uh, i mean adverse to the idea of cutting i really love to see various super zooms and uh, different angles but probably throwing up something new which adds to the enigma of the form which i believe is plenty in abundance like these forms have been explored for over centuries and i guess uh, now the camera being an important tool we can discover something new as well so uh, here i feel um, not just the performers but the dancers actually should uh, uh, be leading us because uh, being performers uh, i mean having the first person experience of exploring the, uh, these uh, pieces they can be the best guide and uh, their involvement should happen it should not be just two different people uh, following different processes so good to have a good conversation before on and uh, be sure about what we are doing rather than just being random at that point of time that's important just being random <laughs> i guess and that also thank you so much loop duck for being in uh, and spending your time with us and you know having this uh, enriching conversation i really uh, now would uh, request uh, shivani to sort of close this session and um, yeah thanks a lot look that once again thank you so much same and, here and and i also would love to uh, actually uh, look that is also going to uh, be uh taking over the duet with camera instagram page um this week uh on the camera and i instagram takeover series and more there just have a just uh follow that page and see how he gets deeper into the subject of movement and camera and on off to you shivani thank you so much if you have also any questions or if we have any questions from the audience yeah so um i do have a question but i think uh, lubdak sort of covered um, a lit, like a, his response sort of covered that uh, aspect that i was going to speak about but since i i just uh, let the audience also know uh, so since atkam online is a digital platform and we are trying to build a community um, of artists online and we have actually been exploring with this online digital space for performing arts and i actually do um, agree that you know intention and the clarity behind your intentions really makes all the difference when you're putting your work across any medium but uh, specifically so for the online medium because we are essentially taking a form which was not built for this space it was designed very differently it was the entire experience was designed differently so now when you're trying to bring that onto screen on onto like the digital space onto screens and using camera and film as a medium there ideally will be a change um you know and that change should not be random like you said i wholeheartedly agree it there should definitely be an intention and clarity and the and a purpose behind why you're doing it so on that i wholeheartedly agree and um, that's where i think uh, lubdak already you know told me his um, thoughts about but uh, yes this this discussion has been really really enriching it has given us a lot of insight into um how you know how like uh, because both sumeda and i are, are artists are dance artists so we uh, you know think from that perspective so it was nice to for one speak to the other side and then get their perspective on uh, on the same subject so i'm really glad that lukta could be here today and um, yeah of of all the things that you spoke about this one uh, point about intention uh, is going to stay with me and the other one especially uh, that would stay with me is that choreography goes beyond just choreography of movement there is choreography maybe of light of sound and that holistic approach that you spoke about and that you've also adopted in both your films i think that is one of the major 
uh, takeaways that I will, uh, you know, have from this discussion. And um, yeah, last but not the least, I want to thank all of you who are watching. Thank you for joining us today and spending your uh, precious time with us. We will be coming back with more episodes of Raha Conversations. So please do follow Do It With Camera and Arts Come Online on Facebook and on Instagram. We will be posting about the next sessions. Um, and like Sumedha mentioned, Lubdhak will be taking over the Do It With Camera uh, page and he will be taking us uh, through his like taking us in more in depth um, on his process behind creating something. So follow do it with camera. I'm going to post the handle on in the comment section. And um, yes, we hope to see you next time too. Thank you so much for having me as well. It was great. And I really hope uh, we have more conversations like this because uh, I mean, uh, we have been uh, focusing a lot on the result and not on the process. And I believe uh, if you focus on the process, we will be having better results as well. So uh, thanks and best of luck to the team. And uh, looking forward to more similar associations in future as well.